Okay, so the idea is to do an exercise in uh, neural networks, very simple neural network, very simple fit for neural network. And we'll see how we use the matrices that uh, represent the weights that are on the edge of the neural networks and how we use the input values and the activation function and get the uh, output of the network and calculate in the loss function or and then using backpropagation and how we use the chain rule, the idea of the chain rule to update the weights in the matrices. So uh, let's start. This is the network we get. This is the network and we have three input uh, nodes. We have one hidden layer, one output layer and input layer with fully, which is fully connected. All this network fully connected fully connected fit for neural network. So uh, we start with representing the network like this, H, H, Y, X, X, X. And the, this W is represent the matrix of the weights that are in here. You can see that there are a, a three by three, a two by three matrix which represent all the weights in the first layer and then there is uh, the second layer which the, the weight there are represented by the V the input layer X is 1 to 1 and the T is the true value the Y is the value that we get from the uh, network but T is the true value and we want to see how we construct the network and how we calculate the output and how we do chain rule to get the prepropagation. So how we calculate y, assume that uh, the loss function is uh, defined by this rule, which is the y we get output from the network minus t, which is the true value squared, and half of this, this is the loss function we define. The uh, activation function is this, max by zero and z, quite uh, similar or let's see, quite similar to ReLU function, ReLU activation function. Okay, so how we calculate y? What we are doing is taking the vector of x, this is the input layer, multiplying by w, this is the matrix of the weights of the first layer, then on x times w, we do the activation function, on the activation function result from or from doing it on wx uh, we need to do it w is 2 by 3 and this is 1 by 3 2 by 3 so we need to x transpose it right so 3 yes to do it we need w times x transpose in order that the multiplication will be valid. So w times x transpose and then the activation function on the result and then we are doing v on the activation function and on v on the activation function of w trans x transpose we do again an activation function and we get the y. It looks like this. And they didn't do uh, x transpose, but I think it should be because they, uh, or they uh, represent x as a column vector because if it's a row vector, it's three by one. So, and this is two by three. Ah, okay, you need you can get two by three. Yes, you don't need to make it a column vector because it's two by three times three by one. Yes, okay, it's okay. They're right. W times X activation function on the result you are doing this this is the V you're doing activation function here activation function here uh, on the result on taking the activation function here and here by V we get uh, here here we do an activation function and then we get Y this is the calculation we do so um, now what they are doing is defining. They are defining the first part, which is activation function wx to be called h. 
and calculate the result and they define activation function v times h with which is the same as this just this part is called h they define it as y and calculate it and we get zero now they want they want to uh, compute the loss the gradient namely doing a gradient descent in propagation using the chain rule to update the weights so how we do that we take the loss function and we want to get the uh, derivative in respect to all our weights in respect to the weights in v and in respect to the weights in w so we need to take the derivative of the loss function which we define like we define like this half y minus t squared this is the loss function we need to take the loss function with respect to the weights on the second layer which is v and take the derivative of the loss function l with respect to the weights of the first layer which is w the matrix w so how we do that in l we don't have v explicitly right if you remember l is defined as this and we can't uh, take the derivative with respect to v because we don't see here where the v is the v lies inside y so we need to take the derivative of l with respect to y and then to take the derivative of y with respect to v which is the chain rule this in order to get the derivative of all the weights in v here you can see here in y you can see here the v you can see also here the v so if we take y with respect to v um, here is the total calculation you take l with respect to y what this will give you this will give you a oh, it's very not convenient if you take this the loss function derivative with respect to y what will you will get you will get 2 gets down to here multiplied by half so it's 1 multiplying by y minus t multiplying by the derivative of y with respect to y so it's 1 so all of this a uh, derivative with respect to y is just y minus t so l derivative with respect uh, to y is just y minus t so here you can see it this one give us this thing so uh, we continue so we take l with respect to y then we take y with respect to vh and then we take vh with respect to v and we got to the destination we wanted to calculate the derivative of v so L with respect to y gives us y minus t. y with respect to vh, you can look at y, with respect to vh is this one, the activation function. So we get this, which is the sub gradient of the ReLU because uh, if we take the derivative of the uh, of the ReLU function at the point of zero it's not differentiable so we use subgradient subgradient is some number between zero and one for this point which is not differentiated differentiable so we, we call it just g because we can differentiate ReLU at zero it's subgradient it's just this very let's call it a solution to the problem of not be able to differentiate to take the derivative of a loop in the transition point between zero and uh, z so we call it g to this uh, gradient uh, to this derivative because we take we need to take the derivative of this with respect to this okay so the result of this is the g and now we take the derivative of vh with respect to v which is take vh and take the derivative with respect to v we will get h and so h from this g from this and y minus t from this 
here we did the chain rule in order to get the change in the V uh, yes. and then we need in the back propagation and the updating we need to update V using this uh, value so you take this V and you update it using the result you, need, you take gradient descent, descent so we take V minus the result so it's minus what you see here so we can it will be 0 plus 2g and 1 minus F, uh, 0 this is the result of the gradient descent here okay so this was taking the chain rule using the chain rule to calculate the derivative of v and take this to update the matrix v we do quite the same thing with w but i won't go through all this because i have a little bit problem with the matrix m but anyway if you want to take derivative of l with respect to w you you of course don't see l in w you see y minus t so we take l with derivative to y and then y there you can see in y not here here in y you can see uh, this thing so where in y is w where here is w W is inside H, right? So we need to take Y with respect to H. So we can then take derivative of H with respect to WX, which is inside here. Then, after we're doing this, we can take derivative of WX with respect to W, like we are doing here. And WX with respect to W is, of course, X uh, transpose. H with respect to WX is, of course, the derivative of these things of the thing of the activation function will lose so it's somewhere i think they taking they somehow got uh, this is the sub gradient probably like g but in four dimension in a, in a matrix form i think and so this is the result the end result of this why with respect to h let's see why with respect to h so this is also a subgradient. Probably. No. Yes. Should be. Mm. We'll get V. This is think it's just like a constant. You get V. We transpose and uh, this one is the Y minus T. So from here we get the X transpose. From here you get the V transpose, and from here you get the Y minus. No, from here you get the. Wait. From here you get. Oh, from here you get the X transpose. From here you get the M, of course. From here you get the V transpose. And from here you get the y minus t. It's of course very confusing, but the idea is to show you the uh, idea of the chain rule. Um, I'm not sure that I correctly did the derivative of y in with respect to h. This is the only place where uh, I, I think I maybe got it wrong. Okay, but I wanted I wanted to show you the idea. Sorry that I didn't really do it very fluently. I wish the idea is passed and the, the correction I should do here. I'm sorry for this. So this was a very, uh, let's call it simple, I don't know. This was an exercise in feed, in a simple feed for neural network, which has one hidden layer and one out and one output layer. You saw how we use the loss function, you saw how we built using matrix notation the value of the output of the network, you saw how we tried to calculate or to do the backpropagation algorithm with the chain rule and gradient descent, uh, and that's it. Thank you very much. And how we represent the values of the network using matrix notation and vector notation. Thank you very much. If there are any mistakes or corrections, and of course there are mistakes and corrections, you can correct me. 
I wish the idea, the direction, there was something, how you wouldn't call it, has helped you a little bit. Thank you very much and that's it.